Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Selenium Conf 2024. With us, we have Mohammad Hasi, and he would be presenting his session on the topic Automating Modern Desktop Applications with Selenium. So, without further delay, I'll be handing it over to Mohammad Hasi. Thank you, Marty, for introducing. And thank you, everyone, for joining. And I hope I'll be able to share some experiences that will help you in your experience and your learning journey. So we will be talking about automating modern desktop applications with Selenium. And you might have noticed I've used a prefix with desktop applications called modern. So it's not all the desktop applications that we will be talking about. It will be focused around modern desktop applications. And what we mean by modern desktop applications, we'll get to know when we dive deeper into this session. Let's start with some of the details, some, some things about me. So myself, Mohammed Haseeb, you can call me Haseeb. I'm a senior software consultant at Hexagon. I've been in testing field for almost 10 years. I've been working mainly on desktop applications. I've used a wide variety of tools, uh, ranging from proprietary tools uh, like QTP, UFT, Test Complete, as well as open source tool for native desktop applications from Microsoft or uh, like Microsoft UI automation, as well as Selenium uh, as the recent experience of using Selenium for desktop application. I started that last year and I thought that will present me a good opportunity to share this experience with everyone uh, who are joining this conference and that will help in their in their career as well. That's a uh, few things about me. Uh, before we start the session, I would like to understand a few more things about you. Uh, it will be just a couple of questions, sort of interactions. So I expect that um, you you use the reactions if you are joining from the Zoom desktop. If you're not able to use the reaction buttons, please use chat and use the emojis to share their, to share your uh, feedback on the questions. That will, that will help me understand more about the participant. And accordingly, I will use the terminologies and wherever required, I'll go in much detail, much more detail to help you better understand things. So let's start. The first thing that I would like to understand is which platform have you primarily worked with? It's desktop, mobile, web, API, or any other platform. So the emojis or reactions you could use is uh, a clap for desktop, uh, a thumbs, thumbs up for web, a heart for mobile, and a party pop for API. And if there is any other platform also you have experience with, uh, use the, uh, uh, the the hand symbol. Please please use these reactions. I'll I'll try to see the responses. I'll just just trying to understand more about you. Okay, it's a mix of fake web and desktop. I would see mobile and web. That's great. So we have a mix audience or mix set of participants here. All right, I'll keep in keep that in mind. Okay, moving on with our next uh, question that helped me understand more. Okay, which testing libraries or tools have you used in your testing projects? Uh, is it Selenium or you have worked with Playwright, Cypress or any uh, similar tool? Uh, you Have you used WinApp driver or you have used commercial uh, tools like QTP, uh, which is now, nowadays called UFT or Test Complete, Catalon? or the, this library from Microsoft called UIA or a wrapper around Whitefly UI. I could see it's, uh, responses in the chat. That's great. So there are people uh, using a mix of that. So there are people using Selenium and WinApp driver as well. As, yeah, that's great. Selenium Playwright and WinApp driver too. That's great. Okay, we'll move on. Okay. One more thing that I would like to understand, have you used Selenium outside of the regular browser or web application testing? So it's just a plain yes and no, uh, just to give me some more understanding about what's, uh, 
what's your usage uh, of selenium and uh, whether you have used it outside of a regular web browser okay there's one yes that's good to know yeah okay i could see there are people who have used it outside browser as well regular browser but uh, uh, yes that that's great to know and one more last question that will be about uh, the libraries that you may have used for UI automation of desktop applications. If any, I haven't given any options, but if you have used anything, just please mention that in the chat. That will be a quick one and then we will move on with our uh, topic today. Auto it, that's good to know. Yeah, that's a good tool. Anything else? Okay, securely, yeah, that's a great tool too. Not much of a different set of tools, but uh, good to see people uh, coming from experience with auto it and securely. Okay, let's start our topic for today and we will start with the agenda. So what's in there for you in this presentation and what are the key takeaways that you could take? Uh, the first thing that we will try to understand what's modern in desktop application because I've specifically used the term modern in the topic and I want, to, I want to cover that in some more details that we would see. Uh, you may have also seen that I've used a cross-platform Safe and Electron, particularly in my details or in my synopsis for this presentation. So I want to talk more about that as well, like why Safe and Electron, why I'm talking about that and why it would be a good choice for some of the use cases that we will talk about. And that's also one of the problem statement that I wanted to talk about and how using Selenium helps in this use case for solving many of the problems. So Selenium beyond regular browser is the solution approach that would address this problem statement. That will be our one of the topic to discuss today. There will be two demonstration. The first one will be a walkthrough of a UI test for Microsoft VS Code using Selenium 4. So Microsoft VS Code is the desktop application I chose for this presentation. And because it's popular IDE for testers as well as developer and many might have used it in our regular day-to-day -day, uh, activities for testing and development. I thought that would be a good choice. And this is a perfect where desktop application that fits in the definition of what we call modern desktop applications for the purpose of our presentations today. And there will be a last demonstration. It will be a very quick one. Just if you would like, when you want to start this using Selenium for modern desktop application, I would show you how you would start. And I have uh, not revealed the name of the application. Uh, that will be, I'll leave it for you to guess uh, until when we go and see that application. So keep guessing. I'll ask you before we start this uh, last demonstration for today. Okay, all right, let's start with the first uh, agenda. What's modern in desktop applications? So we all have been using modern, uh, sorry, we, we all have been using desktop applications for a long time. In fact, the, the desktop, it's the desktop application that I've joined this session with Zoom. So there are a lot of desktop applications that we use in our everyday work. But what's making them modern? First, before that, we are going going into discussing modern, we, we need to understand what is a classic desktop application that will help us better understand what's making desktop applications modern. I've taken an example from the .NET ecosystem, but if you are not familiar with doc, .NET ecosystem and the terminology or the components, don't worry, I have also example of Java application as well. And this is just to help you understand uh, the classic desktop applications. So there will be different components used in making a de desktop applications in .NET technologies. There are components available to make your rib ribbon. Uh, the popular one, BCG ribbon, that's you, you see in our uh, Microsoft Office suite. So all of the ribbon basically are BCG ribbon in that sort of applications. We also have WinFam panels, relatively old. Then we have WPF panel and some of MFC toolbar, which is also very old. So classic desktop applications is a combination of native libraries that 
we use for developing the desktop applications. And this makes a classic desktop application, which is right fit for the platform on which it is designed, which is uh, on which it is developed. So particularly it will run only on the desktop application when you use these components. Similarly, if you are using Java for developing your desktop applications, there will be different components uh, that we will use like Swing or JavaFX like that. So these are all the examples of classic desktop application and what is modernizing them? That's where our modern desktop application terminology comes in. It's not a standard definition. I'll using it just to simplify things and understand more in detail what we mean by about modern desktop applications. So keeping an example of .NET from the .NET world, let's say that we have some components in an existing application like BCG ribbon and WPF. I'll just use for demonstration here. And what modern what is modernizing uh, this application is using a browser inside the desktop application. So cross-platform libraries like Chromium Embedded Framework provides a browser framework, a framework that helps to embed browser directly into, inside desktop applications. It will be invisible. You will not see any of the control of the browser, but what you see inside your desktop application is, is the UI of your application. So that makes it possible for you to run your web application or your website directly into your desktop application, saving your efforts to develop uh, for two different platforms using two different technologies or using two different teams. That's a lot of effort saving here. And you could also lift and shift. If you already have a web application, you could make a desktop application of that. We will be seeing some example as well, uh, which of the modern day desktop applications using this sort of technology. I've given an example here, just to see that it's for a music sharing platform. You, you will have your UI that you would see on a web page, exactly same UI you will see inside your desktop applications. So there are different combination you could use here. For this, uh, for this example, I've shown that there are some components coming from the .NET uh, components as well, native platform. And also you can have some components coming from your web application. The other use case could be you develop entire front end using your safe components. So, so entirely you, you don't have any native components in your desktop application. So there is no BCG the ribbon or there is no WPF entirely. You see uh, th there is no WPF or BCG entirely you are showing UI from your web application. So that, that's how, uh, the definition of modern desktop applications coming in. So you are developing using this cross-platform technology and uh, saving efforts on building it independently. And this is where we, uh, we understand that we can use Selenium for automating these sort of desktop applications. And why we think about Selenium uh, in this case is, First, we need to understand what's the use case that, that we are trying to uh, address here. So uh, before going to the Selenium part, let's let's first understand why I'm talking about Ceph and uh, Electron. So it's another implementation of Ceph where we could use it for class pla cross-platform development. So there are other cross-platform frameworks available like Flutter, there, there are many we could use for development uh, of applications or multiple platforms. But why prefer Safe and Electron? So this uh, specific use case that I'm talking about here. So there are applications that been around for decades. So there are some applications that I worked on uh, were developed in 70s and 80s. Uh, example I've taken is of AutoCAD and uh, some Similarly, there are many CAD applications that were developed in uh, late 70s or early 80s. You could see an image of uh, a photo taken in 1987. Uh, the person in the photo is using AutoCAD to digitize one of the drawing. So these applications have been there for a long time. And what this sort of framework, Safe and Electron, helps is 
transforming this sort of application classic applications into modern day applications where they could move uh, it helps companies move from the standalone applications to the saas platforms or as a saas offering and i've taken another example that's from uh, the company that i'm currently working for it's a platform where you could use your cad uh, some of your cad features directly inside your browser so it's a saas platform and this is uh, being made possible using this saf and electron uh, cross platforms and how it has made possible is so you are Uh, you are working you are keeping all your legacy customer base as it is uh, you are continuing to support them but parallelly you also started working on web application and you are using the same web application front end that you have developed in your desktop application so without discontinuing or you without stopping the work on the application that been around for a long time you are working on transforming your applications or your desktop applications to the cloud journey and making them cloud ready so this is just a, a pictorial representation of this uh, example we have seen so the application was developed in 1980s there some more advancement done in 2000s then in 2020 team started using safe and electron developing some of the components for web application and embedding them in desktop application and while continuously supporting the customer base and in some time in future they help not just themselves but the customers those who are using their products to move to the completely uh, to cloud and saas journey okay so i've already talked about this you are continuously supporting your customer base with uh, the application they are using if they are not ready to move on directly to your offerings that you are providing through cloud providers that's one of the advantages you get then it also helps you get a uh, uh, you, it will provide you a, a larger talent pool where the people who are familiar with uh, popular technologies like if you are looking for testers to test your application so there will be a large pool of people uh, testers who have been have used selenium for automating the ui so you could uh, recruit the people with this experience so you don't have to train them they are already experienced people same same goes with developers so when you are using ceph or electron you could hire people with experience in react or uh, similar technologies in the front end and you get a good community support open source community support uh, in case of selenium so if you are facing issues that that's where this use case comes into picture okay that was the background about why uh, safe and wh what's uh, modern desktop applications we are going to talk about let's uh, take a look at some of the applications that we might be familiar with and uh, what they are using either electron or safe to develop their desktop applications discord is one of them then signal then visual studio code which is one we we are going to see today uh, in our demonstration then microsoft teams as well using ceph uh, chromium embedded framework based they, they have developed their uh, application then uh, there are some torrent uh, streamers as well and there are a lot of them available who are using these components so these are all using electron to develop their desktop application client there are some like adobe acro adobe acrobat as well which is using some of the components they are developing using ceph or electron then this two example is from one from ptc creo one of the popular cad application as well as one from autocad that's autodesk inventor they are also using ceph based components in their desktop application we have matlab and we also have dreamware from adobe again so they are also using ceph so there are a lot of applications out there desktop applications who have used this uh, ceph and electron components okay let's talk about selenium now we have got a good understanding of what is the modern day uh, desktop applications and what's the use case that we are talking about and why we should prefer using this cross platform uh, for developing modern desktop applications safe and electron okay 
so when when we talk about selenium the popular use case or commonly we use it for automating the web applications using the regular browser be it chrome firefox edge safari or anything any any other browser and to automate that what we do we initialize the driver respective driver uh, using the uh, the web driver library we use either webdriver.chrome firefox edge safari and th there are other things as well we do but mainly it depends upon which chrome driver implementation or sorry web driver implementation you are going to use and that's make your selenium working for your respective platform or, or the browser that you want to use now we have we have got an understanding of what is the desktop application that we are talking about and how they are using browsers how they are embedding browsers and running the web application inside the desktop application how selenium can help us automate this sort of scenario or this sort of applications which has web applications embedded inside the desktop applications so we have talked about two cross platforms one is electron one is safe when we want to use selenium for that we have to take care of a few more things which is not a very huge uh, implementation we have to make just along with what we already doing for the regular browsers we have to take care of few more things we have to take care of binary location and that we need to pass as the path of our application so we no longer pointing uh, we are not we we'll no longer need to set up the path to the chrome we ha instead we have to set up the path to our application when we go and uh, see the demo i'll elaborate this more what what i mean by this setting the application path as binary location another thing that we need to take care of is not a man mandatory thing but it's better we separate the uh, uh, the chrome driver and we run it on a specific port using the remote debugging port uh, argument we, we can pass a specific port using this argument and uh, that help us separate the instance of electron uh, the instance of chromium that's running inside our desktop application from the browser that we have in our uh, local system that would be the, that that's the second thing one more thing that we'll need to take care of is uh, the version of chromium uh, or the safe is uh, used in desktop application so we need to be precise with that and at it requires a little bit of understanding your application and how do you know what version of browser you are running because the browser will be hidden uh, you will not be able to access its properties directly to see uh, to check what version of browser you are running but there are ways to uh, know what version of uh, chromium uh, browser or the safe browser is used inside your desktop application i'll show you that as well in, in the demonstration okay let's understand in our use case uh, just few more things in detail what i have already shown you in the last slide so you'll have your ui automation framework which will be comprising of your of course selenium library then you'll have your chrome driver if you are uh, if uh, mostly this cross platform that we are talking about the use case in in our presentation is using chrome so I've directly use the chrome driver it could be your other driver as well firefox or any if any other browser you've implemented and for demonstration for today's demonstration i've uh, implemented it in python you could have it in the language of your choice as well uh, there's no restriction there all right first thing we need to take care of we need to point the argument binary location to our desktop application path and that's very important that we want selenium and our uh, ui automation framework to know that we are working on a desktop application and this is the application that should be launched when we run our program so this thing this is the first thing that we need to take care of in addition to our regular uh, uh, regular ui automation we do for web application using regular browser the second thing is a uh, safe browser we have already talked about that we'll not go much into detail and how to get uh, the details of which version of safe is used inside your desktop application there are various ways to know that i'll talk about that uh, in a bit then we have to provide executable path we could also use uh, uh, 
driver manager like web driver manager or selenium manager as well in my uh, example i've used web driver manager that also you could use and remote debugging port uh, as i said it's not mandatory but it will help us keep things separate for the browser instance that's running inside our desktop application and the browser that's running in our system so that this argument remote, remote debugging port helps with that and then once you have everything set up you could use the selenium as you would use for a desktop application so you'll use all the uh, apis provided by selenium you you can use locators you uh, your popular locators you are familiar with id xpath css selector anything that you commonly use so once you have set up selenium for your desktop application which is running safe uh, which is built using safe or electron you have made the connection then rest of the things will remain as it is so you don't have to do anything extra just to make things run it it will be your regular selenium usage that we would do for a web application with that let's go into uh, our demonstration so as i said the first will be visual studio code as an ide and before i go and reveal the second uh, application that we will be seeing as well so any guesses anyone guessed it what would be the application that we will be uh, seeing today oh that's great it is spotify run right guess for me all right let me uh, go back to the ide so just trying to understand the things that we discuss in our presentation uh, directly how do we implement them here so first thing that i've mentioned that we need to take care of providing the binary location as the application path so you see here i'll start with this and then i'll explain other things so i'm uh, uh, the, the web driver implementation remains same because we are using chrome so there's no change here the argument that we are passing is chrome options binary location which is pointing to the app path and if you see the path of the application is c program file microsoft vs code and code exe so this is where uh, we use uh, this execute executable we use for launching visual studio code so this is the first thing that we need to take care of in addition uh, compared with web uh, web application automation that sorted the second thing we will need to take care of is a remote debugging port we are passing this argument to make things separate and to avoid any uh, confusion between the browsers running on uh, Uh, mixing up okay for that instead of hard coding the port number uh, what i did is i just built a small utility what uh, that will help me find an unused port so i'll i'm providing a range here to look for ports i'm starting with 7900 uh, and i'm just only going to see the next 10 available port and it's likely that i will find a unused port within this 10 range but you could customize this you could increase the numbers if you expect that uh, the ports are not available in this range so starting the this utility will start looking for an empty port starting from 79 uh, 7900 then if it is available that will be the port assigned if if there are no ports unused ports available in the given range our uh, our test will fail with with a meaningful message that there are no available ports in the given range and that's where we save the Uh, the method returns the port number which is unused and we pass this as an additional argument with the rem remote debugging port argument the 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 third thing that we need to take care of is the version of the safe the browser that's embedded inside our desktop application and for that we need to pass the exact version we we don't need to be precise at, at the patch level we could uh, get it precise up to the major and minor releases so 122.0.6261 is where we need to find the chrome driver if you are using the chrome browser here so as i said we could use the the driver manager i'm using chrome driver manager you could use the driver manager of your choice selenium manager will also be an excellent choice here and i'll show you from where i got this version of the safe browser uh, used inside vs code so these are the three things that we need to take care of in addition of uh, 
what we would do for a desktop application, uh, sorry, for a web application. Let me launch VS Code and show you some of the things that will help us understand how it this uh, becomes a modern desktop applications. So many of us are familiar with Visual Studio Code and we have used it for our day-to-day -day, uh, coding and testing jobs. When you launch VS Code and go to the help tab, there is uh, a button here, uh, there is an option here, it's called toggle developer tools. When you click on that, you will see the dev tools window being displayed over here. So this is the exact same dev tools window you would see on your Chrome browser. And Microsoft has did a great job by providing this access to the inspect tool, or the dev tools directly inside the VS code. What this will help us is it will give us entire HTML source code of the application and you would be able to inspect the entire application, all the elements in a way you would do for a uh, web, in a, in a way you would do it for a desktop application. So sorry, for a web application. So let me show you this. So you, you see here, there are uh, details. You, you see all the HTML tags, uh, their area label file, uh, all the same information that you would get when you inspect a web application, same way you will get it here. All right, so we wanted to find out the version of browser which is embedded inside this desktop application. You have to use a little bit of JavaScript here uh, using the console. Very simple one, just one, one line of command that you need to run. So the same way that you would use, you would log uh, your output to the console and console.log and you have to use the command navigator dot app version and you hit it you will it will reveal some of the information about uh, the browsers that you would find in your uh, framework that's used here and the one that we wanted to use here is we, we wanted to know is chrome so you see this is the version that we need to find the chrome driver for so chrome 122.0.6261156 so this is the version that i have used in my code here. This, this is the one that I'm asking Chrome driver manager to find for me. And this is how I got to know about this Chrome driver version. Then you may ask a question, what if the desktop application that we want to automate doesn't provide us or doesn't give us dev tools or it, it's not available, we can't inspect it. How do we know what version of Chrome driver, what, what version of Chrome driver to download or refer to and what version of browser uh, currently running inside our desktop application. So there is other way that we will see in case of a Sp Spotify. Uh, before that, I would like to show this by running this code here. So I've shown you the setup part. So we have taken care of the app path. We have taken care of the um, port number that we want our web driver, uh, Chrome driver to be running at. And uh, we also provided the safe uh, version, the version of the Chrome driver to be downloaded using with the help of Chrome driver manager. For, um, so because I'm using latest Selenium, uh, I have to pass this service executable path of the Chrome driver, which is being uh, written by the Chrome driver manager and passing as a service. And then these arguments I'm passing to my uh, web driver initialization here, the same way that we would do for our web, web, uh, web, web UI automation. All right, let me uh, go and run it from the console window. I've used PyTest uh, as my uh, testing framework here. I'll use that as here to run this test, sorry. And uh, the name of the test is, it's a very simple test. It will just launch uh, Visual Studio Code and click on some of the tabs, file menu, edit, and move over to a selection and uh, and and the view button. So let me close VS Code for now and hit the run button. I hope it works fine. Let's see. Okay, it has invoked. You see it's been moving around. Uh, all right, so very small demo, very small uh, a test. It's not doing anything uh, it's not a 
proper validation for a test case, but just to demonstrate that that's possible to automate the UI of a desktop application, modern desktop application using Selenium. So I'll, I'll just quickly walk through this test uh, that that I've used here, which we just now run. Uh, sorry for directly hard coding things. That's not the way we will do it for uh, our projects, but just for the demonstration purpose, I've used directly one locator, XPath. This is the uh, attack that I've used. All, for all I'm I'm using a area level, I didn't find any unique locator other than that. So this what it, it did, uh, try to find the element using uh, this XPath file, then perform a click, then edit, then perform the click, and then selection and then view. So this is what I did. And sorry for using time.sleep as well, just for demonstration I'm using. And for our uh, for our actual projects, we will use the proper bit sync mechanisms and not hard code the things with this way. All right, that was the first demonstration. And considering the time, we will go and uh, see the other uh, case that we said that we will try to find, uh, we'll try to see for uh, the other application, which is also using, um, which is also using Ceph in there. So let me launch Spotify. Okay. There are some restrictions I'm currently on VPN. Uh, it will not load properly, but it uh, you see the, this is the, uh, the client desktop client for uh, Spotify. And there is no way we can access inspect tool here. Uh, uh, similarly, what we, what we could do it with Visual Studio. So there's no way directly for us to find what version of the browser being used here. In this case, what we could do is we, we could try different approaches. One of the approaches, if if you have access to the source code, of course, if you're working, if it's your uh, application that you are a tester for, you're you developing your test case for, you will have access to source code and you can check in the version of safe, safe browser there. But in cases, if the, the source code is not accessible to you and you you don't uh, see the version being there in the source code you could try a different approach which is uh, which is what i used in this case so this is a very simple class file again the same setup very simple uh, setup here what we did is just we are pointing the binary location with spotify executable file and I've hard coded the port number here just for demonstrating this as well as Chrome driver. So I don't know, you, you may be wondering, we don't know what version of Chrome driver to use, but why, uh, how I got to know that. I haven't find out which version of Chrome driver is used inside the Spotify. I've just randomly downloaded one Chrome driver and I've put and point, pointed my uh, executable Chrome driver path to that. And this will help me find the version of Chrome driver Use version of the safe browser used inside um, inside Spotify application. So let me close Spotify first. Uh, if I did already, yeah, I think I did. Okay, let's uh, let's run this. So I'm using I'll use the default uh, test framework for this case, and let's run this. You see nothing has happened. You don't see Spotify launching, but you would see an interesting log on the console here. You see this, it's saying that current browser version is 124.0.636.119 with binary path here. But what we are using, the Chrome driver version that I've passed here in, in this code. It is, uh, the, uh, the Chrome driver that I've provided is, is 116, but uh, what this message is saying that session not created because this version of Chrome driver only supports Chrome version 116. So it is saying that the Chrome driver that I point I pointed to is 116. However, the browser version in your application is 124.636.119. So this is the version of safe that we need to get from our uh, repository, from Chrome driver repository. Replace it with, with this version and then run the test again. Uh, I have already done that. Let me just replace it uh, quickly. Then you will see I have got this Chrome driver. 
and I'll replace it with here. Okay, let me run the test again. So there, there are no uh, UI, I'm not finding any element, just wanted to show that with, with the right Chrome driver, it launched the specify correctly because it has find the right driver. So you, you no longer see the same error messages again. However, there, there will be different messages uh, that's pointing that uh, some, some of the things are not correctly visible because of the VPN restrictions over here. And with that, uh, I'll conclude what I wanted to show with this session. And I would take this opportunity to thank everyone for joining this session. I hope I'm able to share some experience that will help you in learning a new use case of Selenium and as well as uh, some more information you may have got that's helpful for understanding different cross-platform uh, frameworks for developing desktop application and in what cases you would prefer them over other uh, desktop applications. And with that, I would like to open uh, the question and answer if you have. Thank you, Asif, uh, for this session. Yeah. So we have uh, three questions so far. The first one is, uh, can you use this for Oracle ERP suit? Will this cover Oracle ERP suit kind of applet based UI? All right. Uh, I'm not familiar with the application that you are talking about, but if that application has embedded any sort of browser, be it using uh, the Chrome embedded framework or Electron or any other uh, framework, basically, if you have a browser embedded in your application, then Selenium will definitely work. You just have to tweak a few things. So try the way I did for the Spotify. Uh, try to point the binary locations to your application in case of the, the Oracle application that you mentioned. Run it on a specific port and randomly use Chrome driver. See what sort of logs you're getting in your console window. Just try changing and see if it works. If not, I'd be happy to help and we'll try to uh, uh, try a few things and see uh, if it works. So I'll, I'll be happy to catch up later in the Hangout, hangout section or uh, I'll be reachable on LinkedIn as well, if you'd like to. And uh, is there any stable open source tool to automate desktop legacy applications? Yeah, that's the good question. And the question that many of us working on desktop applications are looking for. Uh, the good tool was there, a stable tool, but unfortunately support for it has been stopped. I'm talking about WinApp driver. Microsoft has done a great work there, but for the reasons better known to them, they have not actively developing WinApp driver. That's the one that I think is the one stable. If you are, uh, if you're okay for using Selenium version three, and if you don't want to move to Selenium four, you could still try WinApp driver because WinApp driver is still working with uh, the Selenium latest Selenium three dot one four one supporting WinApp driver. Apart from that, depending upon the platform your desktop application is developed, if it's just .NET. Uh, you could also try using the API that Microsoft themselves provide. Uh, it's UI automation framework library, UI automation client uh, you could look at. And uh, the one open source project that's uh, still in development is Fly UI. It's a wrapper around the same API provided by Microsoft. You could explore that as well. And, and uh, people have asked the same question. How mm -hmm. can we inspect elements in Spotify if we don't have the source? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I thought I would cover that, but somehow I missed that. So in cases of like Spotify, what you would do is, I'll, I'll show you that. Maybe because there is some restriction in Spotify, I'll take another example. Uh, Last two minutes, Asif. Yeah, Last we'll finish. We'll finish. We'll, we'll take this question. And if, if, if we are uh, logged yeah. out, maybe we can go. For uh, any other questions, you can proceed to Hangouts. Later. Sure. So... Yeah. Postman is another tool which is using the same cross platform and you also don't have any access to the source code here or inspect tool. What do you do in this case? The, the answer is very simple. You just open uh, the Postman web application in the web and just compare it here. What you see in your desktop application client, you have home, your workspace, your API is the exactly same UI. You just open your application in the web browser Open the inspect tool. Let me make it a little bit smaller. 
okay inspect the element that you want it to find the id uh, locator for or uh, details about so i've got the class name of uh, the home tab here use the same class name or anything any xpath that you want to construct any let's say data test id is there so this data text id if you use this will be applicable for your desktop client as well so that's the advantage this sort of uh, cross platform application gives you even if you don't have inspect tool available you inspect it in your web browser develop your test case for what you see in your web web uh, application and the same thing will work for your desktop application client as well that's it folks uh, thank you hasif for the insightful session thank you everyone for joining and thanks for providing this opportunity see you around